Hello everyone and welcome back to World of Warships Blitz with Terry. Today we are looking at this and that's the Nürnberg. Well it is and it isn't. <laughs> so this is the Admiral Makarov, the tier 6 premium actually Russian light cruiser or Soviet light cruiser that uh, yeah is the Nürnberg. So it says here Nuremberg class, and this is literally the Nuremberg. She was handed over to the Soviets after the war as you know reparation of sorts, and they took her on, had uh, had and um, had some use out of the ship. Eventually, I think she was scrapped. But uh, much more interesting is the namesake, who was Admiral Makarov. So Admiral Makarov was a very young uh, admiral in the Imperial Russian Navy, uh, who was extremely talented. And he he invented a lot of things, uh, certain kinds of uh, armor-piercing shells, icebreaker. He was involved with icebreakers. And he was sent during the, uh, during the Russo's Japanese Wars uh, uh, over to the east, to the Pacific, to Port Arthur where the Imperial Russian Navy was kind of blockaded by the Japanese. And previously they had just more or less been sitting there, being blockaded, and not had much of an impact on anything. So when Makarov arrived, he started making them a lot more proactive, a lot more aggressive. Um, he actually set them out to sea. He had them return fire, things like that. He took the Petropavlovsk. The, not the Gangut class, but the older one, the uh, 19th, 19th century pre-Dreadnought as his flagship, and um, pushed back against the Japanese quite a bit. So eventually the Japanese grew very, very tired of trying to blockade that port and put some mines in front of it and tried to lure them out. So what happened was that a destroyer, a, a Russian destroyer, was falling in line with some Japanese destroyers getting well, on, a, on a return on a return journey and um, because he got confused and upon realizing his error they all started shooting at him. So Makarov ordered his ships to sortie out of Port Arthur and uh, and go and well help the destroyer and the Petropavlovsk did run into a mine on the return and she sunk extremely quickly with uh, including Admiral Makarov himself on board which was a huge blow to morale because he was uh, someone who single-handedly uh, inspired his people over there. So that, uh, that happened during the uh, Russo-Japanese War, but in 1913, after that, the Japanese actually uh, had a salvage team get the remains of Makarov himself and some of his, uh, some of his officers retrieved from the sunken Petropavlovsk... Petropavlovsk... <laughs> That I'm, I'm struggling with that word, and um, had him buried with military honors uh, as a recognition of a, a worthy enemy. So that was that was definitely that, that was definitely um, a, a, a very interesting story about how one one person with a different mindset uh, can can change things around quite a lot. Uh, it reminded me a little bit of uh, Neptune's Inferno and the Guadalcanal campaign where uh, a new breed of, of much more aggressive uh, sailors were turning things around against the Japanese for the Americans. So it's, it's always interesting to read these kind of stories to see how much impact a single person can have on these sort of things. Now back to the ship. Uh, like I said, this is the Nuremberg, but uh, slightly modified. So let's see what the Soviets have done to it. Uh, she's got the same armor, she's got the same maneuverability, she's got the same, pretty much the same main guns. Let's have a quick comparison, actually. And uh, let's see if we can spot any differences. So, survivability is the same, maneuverability is the same. The guns... So, <laughs> the guns are technically the same, but they do reload quicker on the Makarov. So I've got the reload down on under seven seconds, and the Nuremberg still takes seven and a half uh, with identical setup. So that's um, that's a good thing to have because these are these are these are murderous uh, guns with their armor piercing. The torpedo tubes, on the other hand, it seems that the Soviets have gotten rid of well two of them really. 
<laughs> so you only get one triple launcher on the side. Otherwise, they're the exact same torpedoes. But that does put a little bit of a dent into um, into the capabilities of the ship. Uh, uh, at least the way I'm playing her. Because um, torpedoes are, well, almost as important as the main guns for me in, this, uh, in the Nuremberg. Because I do play her very aggressively and more like an oversized destroyer. So reducing that capability by half first put me off a little bit. What do we get in return? Well, we get faster firing main guns. We, de we do get a slightly better uh, uh, anti-aircraft capability. And we do get a slightly better concealment. So, although that might be due to, due to the camo, I actually haven't checked. Um, what ship skills does this thing have? She gets a rapid reload. Okay, so that we've taken a Nuremberg and make, made her more into a in, more fit in line with the Soviet cruisers, because more gun focus, uh, fewer torpedoes, and uh, the standard air defense alert. Now, doesn't make her an AA cruiser, by, not by a long shot. But uh, this this is more about the guns in the Nuremberg, and uh, there's a second aspect to this. So, actually, l let me quickly change the background, so you can actually see what I'm talking about. Right. So let's take a look. Let's take a look at her rear turrets. Um, look at the gun barrels. So unlike the Königsberg, the Nuremberg doesn't get the 360 degree rotating rear turrets, which means that if you've got them aligned on one side, so you've got them aligned over here, you then need to, well, if you want to turn shoot at the other side, either turn the ship around or get the turrets to circle all the way around the back. Uh, not so much in the Admiral Makarov, because the Soviets have installed the secret trans-phase multidimensional uh, gun barrel enhancement because they can clip through the superstructure. <laughs> I'm not joking. This, thing's get, this thing gets 360 degree turrets. It doesn't look like it would be possible, but um, literally the, the barrels just go out of phase and then phase back in on the other side of the superstructure when the turret has turned around. So that's the thing. Which means, yeah, we, we get more of a gunship, um, faster firing main guns, which is good, uh, better turrets, which is good, but fewer torpedoes. So what that means with the turrets, though, is that even though we get fewer torpedoes, we can actually be uh, almost as aggressive in this thing as we are in the Nuremberg, because we do have the capability to get the turrets around. That, that was one problem. That's the one problem in the Nuremberg. You have to actually turn around the enemy ship and keep your turrets pointed. Here you can drop torpedoes on one side, drop torpedoes on the other side, and just keep the turrets on point because they can, you know, take the short traverse around the front with the magic barrels. So how, how does that work? Well, let's have a look. I Equipment wise, I've got the same setup as in the Nuremberg. I've got the main battery mod two because the turrets don't get shot off all that all that quickly. Um, and you, with the three, 360 turrets, you definitely don't have a reason anymore to get the main battery mod one. And I have the double steering because like the Nuremberg, she is a bit sluggish and she is an extremely light cruiser. So you do need to have the capability to uh, to flip the rudder very, very quickly and, and uh, in order to dive under things. The, I've, just I've just put the Seaborne Assault camo onto this thing, but the historical camo is slightly different from the Nuremberg's historical. This one gives hit points, main battery range and torp speed, whereas the, um, the one from the Nuremberg gives torp range. So... Um, yeah, okay, I'll take it, but uh, we're not we're not gonna sail with that today. Commander-wise, she probably works as a she probably works as she she probably works as a captain trainer to a degree. Now the rapid reload is something you don't get very often on Soviet ships. I'm not sure if you get that anywhere on Soviet ships aside aside from this one actually, but uh, we get the underwater protection expert. Um, we get the torpedo alert, we get the artillery maintenance, that's the standard cruiser fare for the Soviet line. We get the air defense expert. Uh, we can use the fire supremacy because um, the mainline Soviet cruisers get the precise aiming. And that will give us that as well. And I've got generalists in here. Obviously you wouldn't want the marksman, which is something you probably would want on the mainline. Uh, and in return, you would want the master reloader, which is also something you wouldn't want on the main line. So that's kind of where it, it falls apart a little bit in terms of captain trainer. 
but then again, you're on tier six. So uh, let's answer the question of how does this thing play and is it worth uh, is it worth it in the Blitz Pass? Because uh, if you haven't seen, the Blitz Pass looks quite a little different than it used to. So first of all, we only have 50, uh, 50 levels. And uh, at level 50, you get the Makarov, not at the very beginning where you literally just pay, you get a premium ship and then the rest is up to you. So you actually do have to make it up to level 50 to get that ship with the paid for Blitz Pass. The, uh, and then after that, you get, these, um, you get these advanced crates, which just have useful stuff in them. And every time you level up, you get another one of those. So uh, previously you only had 100 levels and uh, it was usually relatively easy to, if you, were very, if you were a very active player, to get that done in a week or two. And then for the rest of the month, you didn't really get anything out of the Blitz Pass. These things don't stop. So you can keep opening these opening these crates. If you purchase, you keep opening these crates every time you level up, even though there are no actual levels anymore in the Blitz Pass. So that's the thing. And so yeah, at level 50, you get this. But is it worth it? Let's have a look. Uh, here we are. We are bottom tier on Encounter, which is quite unusual for uh, for tier six. I think it's, a, it's because we are bottom tier and tier seven sometimes get this map. Uh, what do we have? Colorado, Fuso, Atlanta, Galicia, Alba, Aka, and Ernst Gede. Okay. And we seem to have a failed platoon on our side with the Fubuki and the, that got the Königs back into a tier seven battle. But uh, it's it's only the it's really only the Colorado that the Königs back has to worry about too much. I think that's pretty okay. Where do we spawn? Okay, we're spawning over here. So we're gonna take we're gonna take the southeastern flank and deal with whatever comes around there. Because, again, remember, cross-spawn. So let's switch over to the armor-piercing, and then I'll show you this with the guns, right? You see this? Now guns are pointing to the right. Guns phase through, guns are pointing to the left. <laughs> Magic guns. I'll take it. Okay, armor-piercing out, torpedoes, uh, good torpedo angles, as usual. And we'll follow that uh, Lebrecht Mass over there, and take the right flank. Oh, he's, he's, is he pinging me? He seems to be pinging me. I'm not, I'm not sure what he's expecting me to do with airplanes, but um, he's just generally pinging me. Do you, do you want me to come along? Well, you're going this way. There's a cruiser. All right, I'm coming along and I'll help you. Uh, between the two of us, we should be able to take that on, right? Whatever that is. And let's see what's around the corner. Alba? No, Galicionaire. Okay. I have got the armor piercing loaded, so surprise! <laughs> Hello. Okay. I've made myself shown. Let's, let's slow down to like, get him to shoot. Yep, yep, I got him. Don't worry. Uh, or, well, you got him because <laughs> he wasn't paying any attention. <laughs> oh, Alba, hello. Okay. Guns out. And, um, Good job. Yeah, are you gonna turn? I'm gonna drop some torpedoes in your way just to confuse you. Okay, you go. And sets me on fire. Oh, but it's got torps, and I don't have a hydro, so I need to. Do, I do need to be a little bit more careful. And there comes, comes an Anskeda is trying to rush me as well. Okay, Alba's actually slowed down slightly. That's um, where are your torps? Okay, Anskeda is rushing me, um, and everybody ignores the. Oh yeah, there come your torps. I've seen those coming. Okay, again in the Nuremberg, you'd have a problem because you'd have to get the guns turned around. Here, not so much. Okay, Alba torps. <laughs> All right. Uh, it, it seems to be a, a matter of um, I distract them and you torpedo them, right? <laughs> All right, then. I can live with that. Uh, okay, you got two already with your torps. Now, Alba's mine. I deserve that one. Okay. <laughs> Next up, Atlanta. Hello. <laughs> and he's shooting at me, of course. Everybody is shooting at me. That's that's the that's one of the prerogatives of having... Um, of having the community contributor badge <laughs> in the opening screen. Everybody goes and shoots. I, I haven't had a, a single battle where I haven't had at least two or three ships always targeting me. And he's trying to torpedo the Atlanta, but it looks like the Atlanta has a little bit more sense than the rest of them. And might actually dodge some of them, but that's a good spread. Nope, that's two hits. Nicely, nicely done. And he gets the Atlanta, <laughs> okay. So let's see, four ships down. Um, you killed three, I killed one. <laughs> All right, then. Uh, yeah, let's take that one next. Okay. <laughs> I like this guy. <laughs> oh, this is fun. Okay, what do we got? 
Uh, it's a battleship, so that's either Colorado or Fuso. No, I'm gonna switch over to the high explosive for a little bit. Because at this range, um, let me see if I can get a fire started. Oh, it's the Colorado. Okay, Igniser now. Uh, he doesn't see. Okay, there's a destroyer. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Okay, okay, I'll switch back to the armor piercing. Uh, there's an Akka. I don't have Hydro for you, but you've got Hydro yourself, right? You can avoid being talked by the Akka. So I'm gonna take the Akka on. And the fire. Oh, he dodged. And Leberich Mars is helping as well. There's some torps going that way. Uh, yeah, that's mine. <laughs> Alright, 3 to 2. <laughs> okay, Colorado, next. <laughs> I'm catching up. Uh, at this range, I'm gonna, I'm gonna stick with the armor piercing. Now, I'm gonna have to turn here. Let's hope that he's more. Yeah, he seems to be more busy with the rest of them, so. Uh, I'll just heal just in case he decides to block me on the side here. And. Um, yeah, back to the high explosive and see if I can get a fire going on him. Because he seems to be running away from these two. And uh, yeah, I know the Fuso has been on the other side's been buggering off. So yeah, okay, okay. I'll leave this. I'll leave this to the two of you. Okay, he's burning. Got insta, uh, insta repair on a single fire. Okay. That was probably my parting shot, or maybe I can get one more off. All right, now I should be pretty much out of range. Uh, who put that island there? I didn't see that. Ah, perma fire. <laughs> okay. Um, now the Fuso probably is trying to rush our cap. Let's see where he went. Although I'm still spotted, it could be the Colorado. No, Col ah, Fuso. <laughs> oh crap! Ow. <laughs> nope. What the? Okay, 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 okay. I see what's going on here. here oh, double instant double fire from the secondaries. Okay, he's probably going to turn in. And uh, that's gonna get close. Okay, full health Fuso. Let's see what we can do. And I'm almost no health already. Okay, let's uh, fire, focus the mains on his on his front. Okay, and then we gotta turn in because if I turn out, he can turn the ship around. So I'm just gonna hug him. I know that I can't drop torpedo drop you because you're outside, but you can't get your ship turned around either. And I have 360 guns, so <laughs> I can't get these around. So I'm only on 3,000 health. So I need to push you. And you, your guns are, your main guns are pointing the wrong way. I know you have secondaries and they're nasty, but um, I can just get out of torpedo range. Okay, here you, you have some torpedoes. Ah, oh, okay. Is he flooding? Is he flooding? Is he flooding? He's perma flooding. He's perma flooding. Ah, oh, damn it! Four to two for the Leberecht Mars. That was denied. Denied my third kill. We almost, we almost accidentally the entire enemy team. <laughs> Well deserved the Leberecht Mars. Although I do I do claim credit for distracting them all and have them shoot at me instead of him, giving <laughs> and running into his torpedoes. But uh, I still did more damage than him. Well done, you buddy. Well done. That was a good one. <laughs> uh, yeah. In a Nuremberg, I might have killed that Fuso. <laughs> so uh, maybe, maybe not. Uh, we'll, I I don't know. But uh, good ship that. Um, play sl slightly differently than the Nuremberg. The big gimmick is the 360 uh, gun turrets. So that's really something you can um, th that's really something you can make use of by being more aggressive than in the Nuremberg and not having to deal with the turret traverse if you need to fire on the other side. So that makes her that makes up for the lack of hydro because it makes her just so much more dangerous against destroyers. You don't necessarily even need to kite away. In Nuremberg, you need to kite away and keep the guns pointed in the same direction or uh, be careful with the torpedoes in close-range fights. With this thing, you can just you know go one side, go the other side and get the guns swung around, even on an, on an aggressive approach. So this is a good ship, that. Um, it's fun, definitely. She, she plays more a bit like a Soviet cruiser, which she is, but more gun focused, less torpedo focused. But these guns were already murderous on the Nuremberg. And with a <laughs> sub seven second reload, um, oh, these things are capable. So uh, definitely worth it if you want to spend the money. If you don't, get yourself a Nuremberg. She's almost as good as. She's, I, I wouldn't say she's necessarily much better or much worse or anything. I think they play slightly differently, but um, they're both excellent ships. So definitely worth it in my opinion. Anyway, that's it for today. Thanks, everybody, and I'll see you next time. Bye!